join me as I put the final touches on my acrylic painting of this chihuahua. In today's video, I fine-tune this pet portrait and bring this little cutie to life with a reveal of the finished product at the end of the video. You'll be watching me paint the whiskers, the final details in the eyes, as well as some other finishing touches to really bring this piece together. For those who are new here, hi, my name is Mimi and I'm a self-taught artist. I have no art degree, just a love for painting and messing around on a canvas. Now, a lot of things you see me do in my videos and with my paintings, I have learned from watching other creators here on YouTube. I actually believe that anyone can paint and that it is not so much talent, but rather a determination to learn new skills and practice those over and over again until you get the desired result. Now I will talk about the techniques I'm using and why, and also about the struggles I come across and how I handle them. It can be a challenge to perfect the details that will make this painting truly stand out from the texture of the fur, to the sparkle in the eyes, to the little whiskers. These tiny features are what brings the painting to life makes it feel more realistic. So by focusing on these small details, um, you can create a portrait that looks a lot more lifelike. One of the biggest hurdles though is capturing the fur texture, which can be notoriously difficult to get right. But with the right techniques, a little patience, you can achieve a truly realistic look. Now, if you've not watched the previous videos in which I go more in depth about how to paint the fur, I do highly suggest that you check those out. The links will be in the description. Now, something else that's also in the description are the colors that are used for the entire painting. I'm actually working on getting a top down view of my palette in my future videos. So that way you can watch me mix the colors. But do let me know if that is of interest or if you think it'll distract and make my videos a lot longer. Your opinion does really matter, so please do let me know. Whiskers tend to be difficult for me, so I have struggled with those in the past and I was really kind of nervous trying my hand at it again. The difficulty for me is just getting the right consistency of water versus paint. So not enough water and the application would be kind of dry so you put on a stroke but it doesn't really flow nicely and you run out of paint too soon and before you're finished with that stroke and then to go back in to finish that single strand of hair I find difficult and if I put too much or not enough pressure on the brush the width of the hair is now altered so I have to change the whole hair and I like to do the whole whisker in one stroke because it looks more natural and it's just a pain trying to lengthen it or at least well that's that's my experience too much water on the other hand makes the paint more translucent and then it doesn't cover enough or if you truly mess it up which i've done at times as well you'll end up with water drops on the canvas that decide to take a drip down your canvas not ideal but i did manage to do a decent job here and i'm actually quite proud at how my whiskers turned out in the end Did you know that chihuahuas typically weigh between two and six pounds and they grow to be about seven to nine inches in height? They're very loyal dogs actually and they live to about 13 to 15 years old. They are officially the smallest dog breed in the world and um, originate from Mexico. So yeah, they don't fare well in colder climates. So if you live in a cooler type country like Canada where I live, you'll definitely need a jacket or a sweater for them for the winter months. I've never owned or cared for a chihuahua myself, but there's something about these cute little doggies that make me want to check out their personality for myself sometime in the future. But that's definitely not in the near future. We have our hands full right now with two six-month-old kittens, and <laughs> I really don't think adding a dog to the mix is a smart choice right now. Now I'm wiping off paint here because I made mistakes. I wasn't happy with what I did so I'm still working on getting that consistency of water and paint right and if I mess up I just wipe it off and just try again 
But Mimi, don't you rub some of the color into your canvas? Yeah, yeah, I do a little bit. Depending on how much water is mixed in with paint, uh, it just kind of becomes a little glaze. And if it blends in well with the already existing colors, I personally don't really mind. But if the color contrast is really too big, then I'll grab a clean brush, dip it in water and use that to wipe off the paint. Now, if you have watched the other videos regarding this cute little dog, I am so super grateful. I broke the painting up into multiple videos to better showcase each step of this painting and the process. I would love it if you have been inspired by the last six videos featuring this dog and started your own dog painting. Now, as you work on adding final details to your work, remember to take your time and be patient. It's really easy to get caught up in the excitement of finishing a painting, but rushing through these final steps can really distract from the overall quality of your piece. So take a step back, relax, have a cup of coffee, focus on bringing your animal to life. I have now moved on to finalizing the eye or eyes, and I'm glazing the inside of this eye here. I just add either more shadow or highlights or just color adjust to my own satisfaction. The eyes are so important to any animal painting. They are the windows to the soul after all. You'll know someone's home when you look into an animal's eyes. So I find it really important to get that captured into my work, to get that right, because it can really bring your painting to life and make it just feel so much more engaging. Now I'm changing to a smaller brush and moving on to the reflection of the light in the eyes. This is also known as the catch light. And on this particular dog, it was a ring light from a studio that was reflecting that back. So I go in with just titanium white to bring as much light to the brightest parts as possible. Now I'll pop up the reference photo. And if you look very closely, you can see that circle in the eyes. Um, the outer edge was a bit more diffused, maybe a little blurry. So to achieve that, I laid down my first layer with a grayish shade. So that when I got to this point, I can put the titanium white over top and it will look like it's fading out a little bit. Another way to achieve this is by using a white glaze around the catch light. Like either method will work. So just try it out and see what you prefer for your own paintings and with your own process. The nose needed some final highlights as well. This is why I wait with titanium white until I know for sure that the painting is almost done, that I'm in the final stretch. It adds a pop and a sparkle that quickly brings the whole painting together. When you put in those last parts of a painting, be sure to explore different techniques for adding highlights and shadows 
as well as the importance of layering colors to create depth and realism in your artwork. One of the most important things to keep in mind though is when you're adding highlights and shadows to think about the direction of the light source. This will help you determine where the shadows should fall and how the highlights should be placed. So by layering colors and building up gradually, you can create a really rich dimensional look that adds depth to your painting. Now I did a lot of this already. So right at this point, it was more of a fine tuning job and color adjusting where necessary. I'm changing the brush here and I'm going to go back to the eyes because in the middle of that catch light there was a shadow so I'm putting that in. Now this is such a small little detail that you probably won't even notice at a glance. You know if you would walk by this painting and gave it a quick look you'll probably totally miss the fact that that shadow is even there. But it is those tiny little details that do make all the difference. Trust me. I'm changing my brush again and I'm going to go back to the whiskers now and this time I'm putting in very light colored whiskers. You're probably wondering why I even bother. I mean they're barely noticeable right? But if I leave those out something would just be off once this painting is done. Something would just not be quite right even though you might not be able to put your finger on it. I'm going to speed this section up though, as it is a repeating of the same techniques as I used for the darker whiskers. And it also is a bit of a tedious process because one brush stroke for one tiny little hair, then you have to reload the itty bitty brush, doing it again and again. So yeah, let's not get too bored now, shall we? Another brush change is I go back to glazing. I like to use a softer brush for this and this one is a, an older one that's a bit splayed which works actually really well because I don't need very crisp lines here I just want a soft blended look. So I'm gonna go all around the mouth to soften up the edges make it look more cohesive and harmonious and if necessary bring in some warmer tones as well. Well, as you work on adding highlights and shadows, don't forget to step back and take a look at the big picture. Make sure that everything is balanced, that there's a harmony, that the composition is working as a whole. Oh yeah, and uh, don't forget to check your reference photo. I'm going to pop it up for you just so you can see what I'm using as a guide here. Above that nose, there was still an area that needed some deeper shadows. So that's what I'm doing here by glazing over the previously laid down layers. I love watching the transformation from a rough, unfinished painting to a vibrant, finished piece that's just full of life and energy. 
It's such a rewarding experience and it's always amazing to see how those final details can really make or break a painting. So by taking the time to add those final touches, you can create a truly stunning piece, but overdoing it on those details can be detrimental though. Like good old Bob Ross said many times, don't fiddle too much because then you end up fiddling it to death. This painting wasn't made without its struggles though. I mean, working through the ugly faces ugh, can be so challenging, discouraging, like even disheartening. And even the beginning of the painting has its challenges as it takes time to put on the grid, lay down the sketch, put in the background. And sometimes I just get impatient, just wanna jump into it and get to it. And whilst I forget that the groundwork is, is equally as important. Now comes one of the most satisfying moments of every painting, the removal of the tape. I had to really yank it off around the edges as it was on there really snug. Mind you though, the painting did sit on the easel for a good four or five months and masking tape does tend to get quite stuck on the canvas. So that's why you see me messing around here trying to get small pieces off with my nails that were stubbornly trying to stay on. Ah, uh, magical moment, a little bit ruined here. Let's just fast forward through this real quick. So the next sections came off a bit easier, thank goodness. Now, once I decide that a painting is done, it just has to come off and preferably nice and smooth without any hiccups. Now comparing the finished painting to the reference photo, I definitely know and it's very obvious to see that it is not a total copy. The background is different and the colors are not exactly the same. Good thing this isn't a commission piece, but a practice one so I can just add this to my portfolio. I definitely learn something from every single painting that I do. And I see so many things that I would want to adjust and change, but it's important to embrace what it is and just calling it done. If I ever want to go back in and adjust or fix things, I always can do that. I hope you do enjoy following along on this painting journey and I really hope it inspires you in some way, shape or form. And I'm so grateful to have been able to share this with you. Now, if you've enjoyed this painting journey, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. And it's always amazing to connect with fellow artists or art lovers, pet lovers whoever you are, and I love hearing your feedback and suggestions. Also, be sure to check out my other videos on pet portraits, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay happy, keep your peace, and God bless you. Bye-bye!